Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. My name is Hack, and in this video, you're checking out a brand new Magicka Warden build updated for the Flames of Ambition DLC. And this build is a good one. This is crazy. One skill is all you need on this build to do damage. That's it, one skill. We've got nearly infinite sustain as long as you're killing enemies. And we've got some major speed on the Magicka Warden. Put that all together, you've got an insane build for grinding XP, maxing out your champion points. And of course, it's just a lot of fun to play this one. So let's jump right into it. All right, everybody, here we are back on the Magicka Warden with a build update. This is going to be our Magicka Warden Grind God build. Quick shout out before we get started to Jacob Hunter. He's one of my viewers who actually suggested this build. I started testing it out this week and uh, man, this this is so ridiculous. Uh, I'm assuming it might get nerfed in the future, but for now, it's a lot of fun to play and it's really good for grinding if that's what you're trying to do. Uh, so let's jump right into it. Let's check out the buff stats first. So looking at about 39,000 max magicka. 26,000 max health, 12k max stamina, 1100 magicka recovery, about 3,900 spell damage. That does go up to closer to like 44, 4,500 with our uh, spell damage enchant, 61% spell critical, uh, resists are decent. We're really not worried about that though on this build because we're just blowing stuff up. Uh, 64 points into max magicka, of course, being a magicka warden. Got blue food, max health, and uh, max stamina. It's not showing up right now, but it is uh, the blue food. Shadow Mundus, 12% critical damage. We have even more uh, crit damage bonus on the Warden, so this is a really strong option. In terms of your other consumables, tri stat potions will be good. If you don't want to spend the gold, just uh, basic Magicka potions would be totally fine. And in terms of race, I think there's plenty of good options this patch. Uh, races are fairly well balanced. Now, I went with High Elf. You, of course, get the extra sustain, which is pretty nice on High Elf through Spell Recharge. You get the Max Magicka and the Spell Damage. But other really good options would be like a Dark Elf, for example. They also get Spell Damage. And then with a Crit Focus build, which this one is, Khajiit's going to actually be very strong as well. So you might think about that too. So that is the basic setup. Let's talk about the gear. Starting with our first five piece set, we've got Mother's Sorrow. We just want to max out our spell critical on this build. So Mother's Sorrow is still the best in slot option for uh, crit focus builds, spell critical. You get the max magicka, you get tons of crit bonus. This is an overland set, so it's very easy to get. You can farm it yourself. You can get it from guild traders. Now I went with the ice staff uh, on this build because it is going to be an ice focus build, you guys. This is a true ice mage type setup. So if you want the uh, ice focus build, this is a very easy option for that. In terms of the trait precise, we want to max out that spell critical as much as possible. Spell uh, precise is going to be the best option for that. And since we are a one bar setup, I'm running that increased damage enchant on the front bar staff. Now I will have options for two bars uh, over in the written guide. So Mother Sorrow Ice Staff, that's going to take care of two pieces because it's a two handed weapon. And then just three pieces of jewelry. So we got the Mother Sorrow neck, two rings. Spell damage on everything. I just left the uh, Max Magicka. So the Arcane Enchant is going to be fine on this build as well. So that is the first set. Now, second five piece set. I went with something a little bit different. We're going for that Ice Mage feel. So we've got East Grimoire's Birthright. This is another Overland set actually from the base game. Uh, so it's very easy to get. I believe this comes from the Rift. Uh, this is another light overland set so again you can possibly find this on guild traders or you can you know farm it yourself from delves uh, and world bosses things like that so if you're not familiar with this set it's quite good for ice builds it's not perfect i wish it was a little bit stronger but again i just want something very easy uh, to get for this one so spell critical max magicka spell damage pretty good two through four piece honestly for a magicka build and then the five piece adds 400 extra spell damage to our frost abilities. So forgot to point this out in the stats too. This is sort of hidden from your stat sheet, right? So that's an extra 400 uh, spell damage. Plus that'll get buffed by major sorcery. Now for me, stuff just dies so quickly on this build. I honestly just want to max out that crit chance as much as possible. Uh, to do that, you usually will wear two separate monster set pieces. So Slimecraw for one, it's a very good option. You get the 771 critical chance. 
Ice Heart is good for another. Uh, you get 657 spell critical. So this is just pure uh, crit chance, right? Now, another nice option uh, if you want more of the Ice Mage theme is just run both pieces of Ice Heart. Then you'll get the extra damage shield. You'll get the extra frost damage AOE effect, which is actually going to be pretty nice on this build as well. You don't really need the damage shield, honestly. Uh, but if you want to go for that frosty theme, then two pieces of Ice Heart, that's what I would recommend there. But yes, that is the setup. We got East Grimoire, we've got Mother Sorrow, and then two crit chance uh, pieces for the monster set. Talk about the skills next. On the one bar setup, super easy, you guys. As I said in the intro, one skill is what's going to do all your damage. This is essentially a one skill build. Now, we do have some buffs and things like that that you may cast from time to time, but this is primarily just about one skill and that is unstable wall of frost that is from the destruction staff skill line that's our second ability here and we're using the unstable morph uh, which i will usually use the other morph for my solo builds right but this one is special because of the upfront damage it does so when we check it out on our skill bar uh it does nice frost damage remember wardens get bonuses to frost damage by the way it gives us a shield which absorbs projectiles so it's not a true damage shield it's a projectile shield uh, which is decent but it's not really the big point of this skill the point is look at that damage uh every time the barrier explodes deals about 8k frost damage that's that's unbuffed right now and when this crits easily 15 16k damage instantly aoe so how this works in a in a cp grind type of setup is you can cast this then instead of waiting the full six second duration just immediately recast it and each time you recast it it's going to proc that damage so just to kind of show you in an area here it is an aoe skill in front of you cast it like this as soon as i cast it again you see those shards kind of breaking that's gonna be damage that's aoe damage that's happening very fast as a fast cast time as well and it has that cool uh, aoe effect it just looks good it's just awesome so it's a really powerful skill i'll show you uh in a bit in terms of like rotation <laughs> there there isn't really a rotation but i'll show you how it all uh goes together so that's the first skill that's the main skill of the build then we have bird of prey from animal companions is our last ability there. It uh, gives us movement speed when casted. It gives us minor berserk passively, increased damage done, plus some good uh, passives in the skill line as well. Arctic Blast is next. This is a flexible spot, you guys. I like just having Arctic Blast on here for a heal. You can see it's a pretty juicy heal on the first cast, plus a heal over time. So you can think of this kind of as a buff and as an AoE dot. Like I said, it's not necessary to cast this. It can be just there for your burst heal if you need it. Now, some other things you might consider instead, if you want to do even more damage, uh, you can put Deep Fisher in this spot if you want. This does take three seconds before the damage hits, but it's a good bit of damage. Uh, so if you like cast this early when you're running into a group, it can be pretty strong. It also applies the Major Breach debuff. That's a good option. You could put more uh, Winter's Embrace skills here. If you don't like Arctic Blast, Winter's Revenge is very strong as well but that is a dot effect. So again, just a good all around option. Arctic Blast for the extra heal uh, is nice. Then we just have two buffs uh, to finish off the skill bar. So we've got Blue Betty, again from Animal Companions. It gives us some Magicka sustain. It also gives us our major brutality and sorcery. So increasing our damage. And then we have Inner Light from the Mages Guild. This just makes the build very easy. It's gonna give you that passive max magicka passive major prophecy that's about 12 percent extra spell crit chance and you get all that without having to cast anything so it's really good now in terms of the ultimate you have some options here as well now i have been running this with the bear pet and i think this is kind of good just for that just passive damage you don't really need to control him he'll just he'll wander around he'll smash down things so anything that survives your initial couple of ice walls he can just finish them off for you so i do like that um, if you want something more sustained damage, then you can go with the Warden Skill Northern Storm for your front bar ultimates. This is going to do a lot more damage, uh, plus increase your max magicka, plus give you major protection. So if you wanted to fight like a boss or something, then you might want to throw on Northern Storm, or you could use the other more permafrost. And then another just nice option. Also ice damage by the way, 
Mage's Guild, Ice Comet. So that's going to take advantage of all our, our Warden passives for increased frost damage as well. So those are your main options. But like I said, just for ease of use, uh, the Bear Pet is going to be nice. So what he looks like. All right, so that's the basic setup. Let's uh, do a quick demo right here of the ice wall. So you can see when I cast it initially, it doesn't do the damage, but here, boom, 16K uh, frost damage there the second time. So again, you can cast it as many times as you want after the initial cast, and it's gonna do damage. Okay, and you can even preload this. And what I mean by preload is when I cast this down, you can see on the very right hand of my buffs, you can see the icon for unstable wall. That means if I cast it again while that buff is active, it procs the damage, okay? So if I'm gonna go into a big group of enemies, I can pre-cast it over here, smash it down here, and then you can see it's doing that damage right away without having to cast it first. Uh, in terms of buffs, again, super easy. Just maintain your uh, Betty niche, and then you can even roll your heal up first. There you go. Everything's exploding. The bear's taking care of anything else. That's the basic setup. I'll have some more gameplay at the end of the video in case you want to check that out. Uh, but let's talk about passives next. So what passives do you need on the Magicka Warden? Well, we get some very good ones. Uh, animal Companions, first of all. Bond with Nature gives you a little heal. Now, this actually procs when you recast your uh, Blue Betty. So this can be nice for some extra healing just for free. Savage Beast, of course, you get ultimate, and this is going to be especially good if you choose to run uh, Deep Fisher. Flourish is definitely worth two points. You increase your Magicka and Stamina recovery by 12%, and then Advanced Species. This increases your damage done by 2% for each of those Animal Companion skills you have slotted, so this is another good reason to run the uh, Bear Pet. It's going to give you some bonus damage here. You can see 6% on the one-bar setup, which is pretty good. Green Balance, we are obviously not running any of these on the one bar version. On the two bar version of this build, you can run some, some heals, like on the back bar, for example, Living Vines. So some of these I would pick up, yes. The best one, though, is Maturation. This gives you that minor toughness buff. Uh, and by the way, this will proc off of any heal. So it will also proc off of your, uh, you know, the heal from Arctic Blast. It will uh, proc from the passive heal of Blue Betty. You can see right there, there's uh, the 10% extra health. So even though we're not using any green balance abilities, especially on the one bar setup, I think that passive is actually really worth it. It's one of the best you can get on the uh, Warden. What else? Winter's Embrace. Yes, we're using a few of these skills, but the really good one, you guys, Glacial Presence. This increases your chance of applying Chilled. We're going to get into this uh, when we talk about champion points as well. Wardens have a very good uptime on shield, and shield enemies also take 10% more critical damage. And since we have such a high crit chance, this is going to push out even more damage on the setup. So make sure you get that one. Frozen armor is okay. You get some extra physical and spell resistance. Uh, Icy aura reduces your snares. And then this is what we were talking about. With the Magicka Warden, frost damage is increased by 10%. This is really great. It's going to stack on top of all of our, our other buffs, our sets. Uh, to, to push out some really nice damage. Yes, you'll want your uh, Destruction Staff passives. And I talked a little bit about the sustain on this build, almost infinite sustain using Unstable Wall. Why is that? Well, it comes down to Destruction Expert, the last passive in the Destruction Staff skill line. When you kill an enemy with its Destruction Staff ability, you restore 3,600 Magicka. That's more than the cost of Unstable Wall, right? So that's also multiplied by the amount of enemies that we're killing, right? So that passive, pretty sick on this build combined with our other uh, champion point passives. Yeah, this build has very good sustain. Light Armor, yes, pick those up. Mage's Guild, we are running some Mage's Guild abilities. I would recommend those. And of course, your racial skills, alchemy, medicinal use is always good. Make those potions last a little bit longer. Uh, those are the passives I would recommend. Let's talk about champion points next. Now, on the uh, written guide, I will have different loadouts for champion points, 300, 600, 900, and 1,200. Uh, in the video, I'll just kind of show you like the best champion point stars that you'll want to work towards. So in the green tree, I always start with Steed's Blessing. That's 20% movement speed, really good. 
uh, CP star there that is slotted, so you need to put that on your uh, champion bar up here. Then from there, I'll usually pick up Gilded Fingers, so 10% extra increased gold. Might as well do that while you're grinding uh, experience. Then these, I'm just going to put the first stage in here, so Fortune's Favor, Wanderer. Break Fall is okay. Uh, this reduces your fall damage by 35%. You don't have to get that right away, but eventually I would max that out. Steadfast Enchantment is actually really good on this build. Uh, your weapon enchants are going to not decay at all, basically because this has 100% reduced decay rate. If you max this out, that means you never have to recharge your weapon, which is kind of handy. And then more slotted stars, I would get Treasure Hunter up here, so it increases the quality of items you find in treasure chests. And then Rationer, I would get this for the extra duration. This in increases your food and drink duration by 30 minutes. Also works, by the way, on Sigic Ambrosia, Ethereal Ambrosia, Mythic Ambrosia. All of those get buffed by 30 minutes. I have another video about this. This is a really good way to save money, you guys. Make sure you get this one. And then finally, Liquid Efficiency. I'd only use this if you're needing like expensive potions, like if you're running Tristat or spell power potions, you have a chance not to consume those, so it's it's okay. In our blue tree, this is where we're getting our damage and some defense. Uh, you'll always start in precision first, so this increases our crit chance, 40 points into there. We'll then unlock your uh, purple extended might sub constellation. So you actually click into this and then put some points into piercing. I'd recommend 40 points there initially, just for the extra penetration. Now, this stuff is extra. Talk about that. You don't need to get it right away. But once you unlock piercing, you can go up here into the right hand and then get these more damage-focused CP stars. And these are slotted. So Biting Aura increases your AoE damage. That's going to buff your unstable wall, okay? That extra burst damage from wall. And then Thaumaturge, this increases your damage over time. So the dot effect from wall, as well as... If you're using any more dots on the warden, this is going to be helpful. From there, I would just go back into this area. You have some more sl slotted stars you can pick up here. For example, Fighting Finesse, 10% more crit damage. That's going to stack with all of our other bonus crit damage, you guys. Whatever the warden has. Uh, if you're Khajiit, we're running Shadow Mundus. You know, we have tons of crit damage. So Fighting Finesse is very nice. And then a pretty unique star that I found worked really good on this build is called Occult Overload. And I've been looking for builds to run this on. It's very uh, unique, it's very specific, and it only works on certain types of builds. So whenever you kill an enemy under the effect of a status effect, they explode for bonus oblivion damage that also hits all other enemies in the area, and this 4,000 damage once you put 50 points in here. So the damage is not huge, but it is free damage and it is AoE damage. And the nice thing about the Warden, you guys, is they have that uh, passive that we saw in the Winter's Embrace skill line that increases their chance to apply the Chilled status effect. And Chilled is going to proc this CP star. Uh, we also have all the other ice damage skills. Each one has its own chance to proc Chilled. And if one of those enemies in, a, in an area is Chilled and you kill them, they explode more bonus damage. So this actually works. It actually works on this build. You'll see it in the gameplay. It's just free damage. You don't have to get it if you don't have enough points. Uh, but if you have extra points, try it out. It's pretty fun. So that rounds out all of our four uh, damage stars. Again, Fighting Finesse. We got Biting Aura, Thaumaturge, and Occult Overload. That's going to give you most of your damage. Now, if you have more CP beyond that, you can put 40 into Eldritch Insight. That's going to increase your Max Magicka. Come back into here and pick up Flawless Ritual. This gives you more chance to apply status effects. So this goes really good on the Warden and when running Occult Overload. Uh, 40 points into here gives you 60% bonus chance. And then War Mage, this gives you more spell damage. If you have points beyond that, we're talking about like 1,200 around that area, 1,200 CP. You can actually get some defensive passives if you want them at that point. You don't need them on this build, honestly, uh, but you can get them. So 10 into quick recovery, 40 into preparation. That reduces all your damage taken. So that's the blue tree stuff. Let's talk about red tree last. So you can come over here to start. These are all really strong. Boundless vitality, extra health, ironclad, extra armor, rejuvenation, extra recovery. These are all good. And then the fourth uh, slottable star I will get is over here, Siphoning Spells. So this gives you 1,500 Magicka per kill. 
Remember, that's on top of the 3,600 Magicka we get if they die to our wall from the Destruction Staff passive. That's why I mentioned this build has infinite sustain, pretty much. Now, how do you get here? You need to start in Sprinter, Hasty, Hero's Vigor. You can just put one stage into all three of these, or you can max them out if you have enough points. That will unlock all of these. And again, I think Siphoning Spells, probably the best one in this whole uh, section right here. If you have any more points beyond that, I always put points into Tumbling and then Defiance. Last but not least, Outfit Style, in case you're curious. So most of the body pieces are Yakudin style, and it's actually the medium armor version. So right here, Yakudin helmet. I'm doing that for the chest, the legs, the feet. The only thing that's different really is the hands. You get those cool little spikes that I like. Those are actually Zivkin. I think it's medium. Yeah, medium Zivkin bracers. And then the shoulders are different as well. Shoulders are light dark elf. And that is it. All right, everybody. And with that, that's going to wrap up our Magic Award and Grind God build for the Flames of Ambition DLC. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. You found it informative. Of course, if you did, don't forget to crush that like button. And make sure you're subscribed right here to HTM for many more builds just like this one. We also do ESO news and guides. So make sure you're subscribed with those notifications turned on so you don't miss anything. Now, if you have any questions on the build as far as what champion points are best, based on your level, if you're looking for a two bar skill setup, all of that's gonna be in the written guide. So check the description, check the pinned comment for that. Also, if you'd like to support the channel further, we are updating our members only video library. We've got new videos coming out this month for members of our elite squad. If that sounds good to you, click on that join button down below for more information. And as always, thank you all so much for watching. Hope you're doing well, stay safe out there, and I'll see you around in the next video.